Okay guys, um, another requested video. Um, this one is for Albert Dog 101 um, He wanted to know if I could show him how to make a bow shackle. And I think this is what he means. It's basically a shackle, but it's instead of being just like a U shape, it's more rounded. Um, and it's sort of thicker at the top, and it tapers down towards the eyes. And obviously there's a pin that goes through. So anyway, we're going to have a go. Um, it's a very, very long time since I've ever done one of these. But we'll give it a go. We've got the fire alight. So we'll go and cut off some steel and give it a go. Right, I'm going to start with a bit of half inch round, 10 inches long. Um, I like half inch round. I've no idea if it's the right length. Um, we'll soon find out. And we're going to start by Let's get that out of the way. Um, start by upsetting or jumping up about half an inch on the end. We're going to thicken that, then turn it around and do exactly the same the other end. Then the hardest bit of the whole job, I think, is going to be thickening the middle. Because it's going to be that much longer, it's going to go everywhere. But I've always struggled with things like that. But we're good to go. And uh, see what happens. Alright, so we've got a short bit hot, give it plenty, you can see already it's gone all over the place but it doesn't really matter, you want to try and keep it as straight as you can, but uh, don't worry too much. And you can see with only a few blows how much that's thickened that, see that's really sort of thickened that quite a bit on that end, so we're going to give it another couple of blows and it's the rapidity with which you hit the job not how hard so I'm told so you don't want to be going like a machine gun but quite a few blows and I think that'll probably be thick enough a bit of focus no yes no but anyway I think that'll be thick enough so I'm gonna just flatten that down a bit straighten it back up because uh, we will be tapering that anyway. So we're going to do the same the other end. And see how quickly that thickens. That's a good example there. You can also see how the rest of the bar goes well out of shape. You see that's only, I don't know how many blows that was, but it wasn't many. Let's thicken that up nicely, but again we'll just give it another one to try and match the other end. few more blows. You can see that's bent all over the place, but it doesn't really matter. We'll flatten that one off because that's about right. And there you go, that's the two ends sorted out. There's nothing special, but uh, good enough because we're going to taper it back here anyway. Um, so there we go, so now we've got to heat the middle up and try and do exactly the same there. This is where it all could go terribly wrong. Right, we've got the middle hot and I've always struggled jumping up sort of longer lengths for obvious reasons because it's just going to go everywhere. But what you've got to try and do is a compromise you want to try and keep it fairly straight, but you don't want to hit it so much because it, it's very tempting to hit it so much to get it straight that you end up just thinning it back out to where you started. So it's tricky. I don't know if you can see it's starting to thicken there. And what you've got to do is you, you want to hit it enough to increase the thickness, but not so much that it goes completely out of control. A pair of tongs that fit is always a good idea as well. You can really hold it well with. I'm sorry about the camera, it keeps going out of focus, but you can probably just see that starting to thicken. You 
so it's just you need a, a few blows keep it straight a few blows keep it straight if you do too many blows it'll go too out of shape and you'll almost undoubtedly start thinning it down by straight trying to straighten it so it's it's real tricky but you can see there that's that has actually thickened it not by much but enough we're going to thin out the ends anyway which will increase the contrast but quite a good tip is to make it thicker just take that extra heat you see here like we did with most of my other videos over the edge of the rounded part of the anvil and keeping it square I'm sorry the camera's not focusing properly I should have fixed the focus on this and I didn't I'll keep the eye at the end the same thickness as the tapered bit but yeah what I was saying is on, a, on the, the jumped up bit in the middle take one heat extra than you really need because undoubtedly when you come to the end to just tidy it up take out the little nicks and bangs and dings you'll end up thinning it down too much so if you can just take that extra heat just thicken it up a bit more when you do take out your nicks, you see that's that's focus better now. That's thinning down, and we're going to round this end up. Um, yeah, when you do finally sort of tidy up the middle, you'll end up back to what you you really need. Right, I'm going to carry on, just thinning this out a little bit more, and not really thinning it as much as just tidying up, because we've we've gone from square back to round now. So we're just taking out a few of those marks and again this is something you've probably seen on other videos flattening them off but on other ones I've made it into a complete diamond this time we want to round it off so don't go quite so mad now keep it moving you see me winding this up and down up and down you need to keep it moving if you don't what will happen is you'll be hammering on the top but the, uh, and moving around but the bottom edge will be going flat because really the anvil is acting as a hammer on the other side so you've got to keep it moving so it's doing blows on both sides you see that's not bad it needs a bit of work as always I'm pushed for time so I'm not taking as much care as I probably should do. You see, just keep it moving, keep it moving, keep it moving, so that it's it's not getting a chance to get a flat on the bottom. And over the edge, just take that end off. Keep it straight all the time. Try and keep it straight, and keep the the eye at least as thick as the end of the taper, maybe just a touch thicker again so that you've got a little bit to play with when you want to tidy it up otherwise you'll end up with it too thin when you're tidying up keep it moving, keep it moving that just avoids any flats alright well it's not the best in the world. As I say, I'm running a short time, but you could spend a bit more time playing about with that, getting that round, but you get the idea. It's pretty round. So now we'll do the other end. Exactly the same. Over the rounded edge of the anvil, keeping it square, tapering it down square no point trying to do it round you'll just end up in a whole mess just keep backwards and forwards on the square and again round the end off I'm really sorry this isn't focusing very well but you get the idea I hope I really must remember to fix the focus on this camera when I'm doing something on the anvil Right, well you can see it needs a bit of work on that end, so what I'm going to do, I'll do that so you don't get bored watching it, and then I'll come back once it's done. Alright, done both ends now, and 
you can see they, they could do with a bit more work but I say I'm running short of time you get the idea and you can see in there quite nicely how it's much thicker in the middle and it tapers down to both ends so we've got to do now put holes in so we're going to punch them and what we're going to do it with is an old allen key or allen wrench just straightened out tapered down got it hot put it on the end or on the center give it a few taps until you just hit the anvil and that was one hit too much you can see what's happened what's happened is it's burred the punch over in the end and that black mark is where it's come through and I just want to give it a tap and there you go you see the bit on the anvil there it's popped out I just want to make it bigger so put it over the pritual hole make it slightly bigger there you go, nice little neat hole. Just tidy it up. Keep it straight. Yeah, and as I say, um, I'm going to do the other end now, but what happened was there, I hit that punch one too many. I knew it as I did it, and I felt it hit the anvil too much, and it sort of burrs it over inside. So there you go, just enough and it pops off easily when you've only done enough and you can't quite see it there but there is a little mark. You just put it back on that mark, knock it through and there you go. As I say, if you're not confident getting the centre by eye, you can always put a centre dot in there before you heat it up, give it a little quick wire brush as it comes out the fire and you'll see your mark quite easily. Alright, there we go, we've got our holes punched. So that's that bit, actually it's getting a bit hot. I'll cool that out. There we go, right. So we've got our holes punched, so now what we've got to do is bend our ends up. Each end up, not far, probably about 30 degrees, 25, 30 degrees. And it makes it much easier when we bend it. It's, uh, you'll see why anyway. Let's get it warm and give it a go. Right, just tap it down over the rounded edge. We don't want a square um, mark. You know, we don't want any cut marks. And that's all we need, just a little bit. So just do the other one. Same again. Make sure you turn it the same way as the other one. Just bend it down, bring it back, tidy it up, and there we go. I say it's probably 25 degrees, something like that. Just like that on both ends. And when we bend that round in the middle, those ends will come out sort of come down parallel. So I'm going to have to move the camera down so you can see what I'm doing, but I'm going to get the middle hot and bend it over the beak. Right, hopefully this will focus a bit better than it was. We've got the middle warm. Now, actually I'm just going to cool out that end so I can hit it without damaging it. So we're not actually damaging any of the, the heated metal. We're literally just pulling it round. That's not bad for the first bend, so I'm just going to warm up this other end and do the same from this side. Again, just going to cool it out so I can hit that end. It doesn't take a lot, it's quite pliable. Just give it a few taps. Now you can begin to see why I put the bend on to start with. So as you bring it back round, they come up parallel. And if you'd left them straight, you'd, A, you'd have a job to hold it with your tongs. Clean it off a bit, that's slag. Um, you'd have a, whole, yeah, have a job to hold it with your tongs and also it'd be slightly awkward to bend them out once you've got the, 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 the whole bend in there. So much easier to do it first. There you go, you can see there, 
not quite parallel, so I'm just going to warm those up and bend them around a bit. So I'll just a little tap. It's much easier just to give them a little tweak. And there you go, quite parallel now. So just a bit of tickling around now. Not really necessary, but I like to try and get it right. But yeah, as I say, you can see how much harder that would have been to bend those ends out because they would all been, almost be touching by now if they had been left straight. And because I bent them round, bent it round just by hitting those ends, the bit that we tapered from the right up the top all the way down doesn't get any hammer marks, doesn't get damaged. So it should should need very little tidying up. There you go. Not bad. For a quick one off. I'm going to tidy it up, cool it out, tidy it up, and show you what the result is. Alright, all this has had is a wire brush. There's not been a file, a rasp, a grinder of any sort anywhere near it. That's all hammered and then wire brushed up. And considering I haven't got a lot of time today, look, even the holes line up, considering I was doing this very quickly, they could have tidied those up a bit. But I don't think that's too bad as a demo. And I hope that uh, that's what Albert Dog 101 was after. If not, I've wasted your time. But anyway, it's quite a good demonstration because it, it shows that you can use all sorts of different skills hammering, upsetting, punching so there you go nice little bow shackle well thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it we'll catch you on the next one